React, GraphQL, and Relay.js. My name is Core. Missing Pages intends to shed light on assumptions and details glossed over in Facebook Docs so that it's easier to understand when you read those docs. We will explain how you can use GraphQL without Relay.js, how to set up a GraphQL server on non Node.js servers, and then we will cover Relay.js, explaining how it helps reduce coupling and increase reusability of React components. We will also talk about what Relay.js brings to GraphQL, and finally, how to set up Relay.js GraphQL on non Node.js servers. React family consists of React.js, which models which is a model for handling UI data and rendering the data. When React.js components become complicated, we can use Flux or Redux to organize our code better and improve or simplify data flow to make debugging easier. GraphQL is an alternative to REST API, where a single endpoint is capable of serving all the data required. Finally, Relay.js enables your React components to have their data declared and co-located. GraphQL can be used without Relay.js. GraphQL is just a server that speaks GraphQL that has a single endpoint. The single endpoint is capable of delivering all your data, but all these data that you want to deliver must be declared beforehand using a schema. Now a client can request uh, for a piece of data, for instance, the name and address of a store, and the GraphQL server will rename, return exactly the name and address of a store, enabling your React.js components to display the data. Now if you click on shop online here, the client will request for a different piece of data. In this case, the categories and products of the store to the same endpoint. And the same endpoint is capable of returning only the requested data, that is the categories and products. So in summary, GraphQL consists of only a single API endpoint. And GraphQL is hierarchical because our React component is also structured hierarchically. The client has full control of the query. This results in no data being overfetched. And finally, all the data requested is returned in a single round trip. Let's talk about how we can set up GraphQL on non-Node.js servers. GraphQL is client server based. So to enable your server to talk GraphQL, and on your browser side, there must be a bundle JS that's capable of talking GraphQL. GraphQL is transmitted over HTTP or HTTPS. What we mean by this is that you can see that the request made to the GraphQL server is actually a post, UR, post request to a given URL. The only difference is the content here in this case, which is in GraphQL. So to enable the server to speak GraphQL, you need a server library. For instance, if your server is a Rails server, then you need GraphQL Ruby. If your server is Scala, then you need GraphQL Sangria, etc. To enable your server to deliver data, you have to define all your data in a schema. And that's all you need to enable your server to speak GraphQL. On the client side, the bundle.js is capable of speaking GraphQL, but it did, it did not exist on the browser. It actually came from the server as well. And this server, um, this bundle.js requires a set of JS libraries, for instance, React, React DOM, and GraphQL, which of course, your um, customized JavaScript includes, and then it gets packed together 
either using Browsifier or Webpack into a JS bundle, which is downloaded by the browser. And that's it. Before we proceed to Relay.js, let's do a review of React.js. So this is an example from the popular um, Thinking in React tutorial by Pete Tant. So when you design a React.js um, page, usually like you break it down into components. Now if you redraw the components, it actually looks like a hierarchy. That is the brown uh, component contains the blue and the green, and the green contains the purple and the red. So if you, this is one of the reasons why GraphQL is hierarchical, so that it can match the React component structure. Now each React component is cap has to know three things, the data that it needs for itself, how to render this data using HTML fragments, and the data it needs to pass to its children. So to illustrate this, when you fetch a piece of data which is hierarchical, each component will know the data that it needs, and redraws it, and passes the data that its children needs downwards, and so on and so forth. So if you look at the de details of the data, you can see that the top component only requires name, while it will pass down the categories and products data to the children in green. What this means is that there, the coupling is not so loose and reuse is not so high because the parents need to know about the child's data. It needs to fetch this data for its children and then it needs to pass the correct data to the children. So for instance, it needs to pass these props store categories to the category children. So it needs to know this detail. Let's look, look at how ReliGS can um, reduce coupling and increase reusability. So this is a review slide of GraphQL, a single server, a single endpoint that is capable of delivering all data. This is a the app that we're going to talk about, but in this case, we're going to simplify it a bit into two components. The top component, which just displays the store name, and the child component, which will display the categories and products. So as per usual, you will create a React component, but in this case, with Relay.js, you can actually specify or declare the data that it needs together with the React component. So you will say that it needs the name and address from the store. So when Re Relay looks at this, it knows what data this component needs and is capable of fetching directly okay, um, from the GraphQL server without you having to write any AJAX request. Similarly, you can create another React component to display the categories and products. And you co-locate and declare the data required. In this case, it is just the categories, which consists of the names and products of the particular store. Again, when ReliGS looks at this component, it knows what piece of data is required from the GraphQL server, and it can fetch it automatically without you having to write AJAX request. Now, if you combine these two React components together, React uh, Relay itself will be smart enough to do a union of the required data and fetch it in a single round trip. What about passing data to the children? And this is where Relay.js really shines. Sorry. So the top components will just require the store name as usual. But in this case, it does not need to know that it needs to pass the categories to the child. All it needs to do is pass the same thing, the entire this props store. Why? Because if you look back, you can see that the React component for the categories and products already declares that it's going to take the categories from the store and that is why if you just pass down the store, it is capable of finding which part of the data it requires. 
So coupling becomes very loose and component reuse becomes very high because the parents do not need to know about the child's data. It does not have to fetch data for the children and neither does it know how to pass correct data to the children. So what does RealJS brings to GraphQL? RealJS has a lot of other features that is very useful. First, we definitely recommend using RealJS with GraphQL instead of GraphQL alone. So we have talked about component data collocation. We have also talked about auto fetch of declared data without no Ajax code being written. But there are many others, and some of them include like pagination. So you can specify like how many pieces of uh, data that you require, for instance, 10, and then fetch the next 10, and so on and so forth. You can also do things like when you change a piece of data, RelayJS keeps track of where the data is used in which React components so that Relay itself will update the components for you without you having to write code for that. The RelayJS setup is just the addition of a few components. So you basically, on the server side, you just need the GraphQL Relay library. And what you also need to do is, since your GraphQL schema is written in a um, server-specific language, for instance, Rails will be Ruby, you need a converter to convert it into a JSON so that you can bundle it using Babelify, which will to work together with React Relay to bundle your, um, your code with Relay QL DSL into the bundled JS. And that's it. Um, please uh, refer to the articles or you can, if you're using Rails, you can use the starter kit. Um, if you're wondering like whether you should be using React or React with your container, with Flux or Redux or GraphQL or ReliJS, uh, please look at this link. Um, you can follow me at Twitter at Neth underscore six or my company is at Reculture underscore US. Thank you very much.